you know, can you believe it? 1443. I cannot. I cannot. Just think in a month, we'll start our 12th year of the show. Jeez. 12 yeah. years soon. Why do I not? Crazy. Crazy. With you people. What is up with this? <laughs> Unbelievable. All right. So let's get to cracking here. 1443. Put that up. That up. My phone's muted. All right. Welcome to episode 1,443 of the Be Our Guest Walt Disney World Trip Planning Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Rallman from BeOurGuestPodcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the Magic for Less Travel. Happy Wednesday to you. Hope that you are hanging in there this week. And it's, uh, you know what, here's, here's one of the things I'll say about Wednesdays. And this is kind of fun because Geico, which is, you know, the commercial for the insurance. I, I love that the they've brought back the classic commercials like the caveman. But the yep. one they've brought back that I always loved back in the day, it had to have been at least a decade ago, and now Mallory says it constantly, and her cheerleader friends, nice. it's the uh, hump day, yeah. <laughs> you I love, Mike, 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 Mike. So, yeah, I love that my yeah, daughter. Yeah, I'm sure you get it a little bit more because your name is Mike. Yeah, so. I would say. I used to get that a lot when I taught, but you know what? It is hump day, yeah. And, you know, we've been doing this show long enough that that commercial was in its original run. It was. <laughs> it's, it's true. Uh, that, that makes me feel kind of old. It's it it just not Actually, right. My favorite is Maxwell. <laughs> Yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> we uh, we we all the way home. Anyway, so uh, we're not here to to peddle Geico insurance or whatever. It is. We are here to answer your. What's up, Geico? Yeah, exactly. Geico, make the money. Thanks. You know what? They have, they have commercials on every like three minutes, so I'm sure we could work something right. out. For them. I'm yeah. sure we could. Yeah, Geico, let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've already given them like a thousand dollars worth of uh, sponsorships. There you go. Right. It's a freebie. All right, joining us today from a Disney World After All dot com, Touring Plans dot com, and the Mouse for Less, we have Ricky. Ricky, happy Wednesday. Yay! It's Wednesday. Hope oh, day. <laughs> yes, it is. So how are things going in the uh, the blogging universe when it comes to Disney? Kind of a slow time right now, right? It's not too crazy. I mean, it is a little bit of a slow time. Although we've had some crazy weeks, and then we have like it's weird. We'll have crazy blow up weeks, and then we'll have completely slow weeks. It's like it's it's one or the other. It is not just a steady stream of anything. <laughs> I don't understand what's going on. You know, and I just broke the the cardinal rule when you yes, work you in did. Disney. Any anything that has to do with Disney, you never say it's a slow week because right yeah. now the show comes out in like a day and a half on the podcast feed. Everything is blown up. I'm sure by absolutely hundred percent. That's exactly what's going to happen. So <laughs> uh, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Disney, just, Disney just announced a free dining plus a uh, buy four get three free at the oh, same. They've, time. And they've also announced like twenty new attractions <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, yeah that's Seven it. Dwarfs Mine Train is going to be down for the next three years. Oh really? my gosh, yes. Um, <laughs> they're finally taking down the Yeti. No, they're not. No, I'm, not. I'm not starting that rumor. <laughs> All right. All righty. And uh, the, the person who uh, also understands this kind of pain, we have Pam Forrester, co owner of the Magic for Less Travel. Pam, be careful what you say when it comes to this. I know. I can't believe you said that because oh, no. you're so on the ball when it comes to like, don't jinx it. Don't oh, whatever. I'm I know. You're oh. so superstitious about that, and now you jinxed it for us. For me. Thanks. I'm deleting this show. This show is never going to air. It's the un, uh, unaired episode. That's what it's going to be. Oh, right. It could be like the hidden episode. Yes. yes. Like a track on that Alanis Morissette uh, CD from back in the 90s. Oh. It wasn't there's a very also, good song anyway, you know? There's, so. there's also a hidden track on, I, I'm going to throw it back. There's also a hidden track on a Justin Timberlake uh, last album. So, you know, there you go. <laughs> Wow! Look at our music <laughs> range. We know we are. We're giving you the good stuff, guys. And a shout out to Jen, who's on Tragical Express right now. So I hope you had a great. Oh, trip. that's yeah. well. I mean, you know, don't be sad that it's ending. Be glad that it happened, right? Yeah, I'm glad you said that because I was trying to think of that quote. Now butchered it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're here for the questions. Here we go. First question: hmm, What to do? What to do? From Amanda. Wow. Hi, Mike, Pam, and Ricky. My family and I are headed to the world in mid March. My kids are nine, seven, and six. We're saying eight nights and doing a split stay between the yacht club and the contemporary we have two half days planned for epcot and i need y'all's opinion on how to tackle these two days on arrival day which is a friday we are set to land at 10 o'clock i estimate we should be in epcot between 12 and 1. should we plan a tour of the world showcase on that day or, or sorry and tour future world on monday or should we plan to do future world on arrival day and world showcase on monday 
Do you think the Flower and Garden Festival will increase the crowds for World Showcase on a Friday afternoon? Thanks for all your advice. I love the show and listen to every episode. Have a great day and go Hogs. So I'm guessing uh, Amanda is down in to our south, down in uh, Arkansas. All right, so here's here's my quick thoughts on this. When it comes to an arrival day, you know, because you're the thing is with an arrival day, you're always behind the the the, the herd. You know, you're not going to be there at rope drop, so you're not going to be where you're in the best kind of situation when it comes to getting in lines. I like World Showcase for arrival day simply for the fact that you can. Get there, like you said, at 12 or 1, not really worry because you can explore, kind of get your feet wet, get the trip started the right way. If you don't hit all the food and wine or the food and wine, the flower and garden festival booths, that's okay. Just hit the ones you like, see a movie, go to China, go to Canada, see those things before they, you know, get changed out. Um, ride the boat ride in Mexico. Just That's what I say because, you know, future world, you got test track and, and uh, soaring and, you know, you're going to be just behind the crowds there. I don't know. I like to do World Showcase on arrival day in that situation. Pam, what do, what do you think? That's really me too. I hate to have something planned um, that may that I may not show up for. Or I mean, you know, there are so many different things that can impact flights. I mean, last week we saw you know a bunch of things that impacted flights. Um, I just, and even if you're driving, there are so many things, you know, that can impact your ability to just get there. So I try to uh, schedule easy for that first date. Um, I really want something that's not going to be too difficult if I'm not able to make it or I'm not going to be too heartbroken about. And I love to think of that first day as just like gravy. Whatever I get done is gravy because, you know, I, I never know what's going to happen that day. So that's the way I approach it as well. Um, and remember, we've mentioned this before, but if you have dining reservations, like a table service that you have to show up for, um, if your transportation there is late for some reason, you're going to be hit with that cancellation fee. So think about that. Yeah, I always do quick service the first day just for that fact, because that way I don't even have to worry about it because with the table service, I'm thinking, okay, am I going to make it? Gonna, I just don't, I just don't want stress. I, right. Next is my first full day is when my definite plans start happening. Now, what she could do though, is schedule future world fast passes for that day in the Absolutely. afternoon way to attack it. I don't know, Ricky, what are you, what are your thoughts quickly on this one? Yeah. Um, I mean, you might be able to do a little bit of both. Kind of like you said, you can have some future world fast passes for maybe some of the attractions that are not super hard to get fast passes for. So you could do like a Nemo, you could do an Imagination, you could do Spaceship Earth, um, those kind of things. And then head to World Showcase because that way you get a little bit of both. Um, and I find that, you know, wait times aren't super awful for some of those attractions in the afternoon so even if you don't get a fast pass for those you're fine um but they're usually pretty easy to grab one for even if you're grabbing them on the fly they're pretty easy to get um so that's gonna i think that's a really good idea is if you want to kind of get the best of both worlds you really still can uh but i i do like the idea of touring your own world showcase you know, the, the, the Flower and Garden Festival is so fantastic. And the food booths, um, they do have some really amazing options for Flower and Garden. So um, I think that uh, that you'll have a lot of fun kind of walking around and seeing that, seeing all the topiaries that are just beautiful. They have some um, great exhibits, too, uh, that you can take in, in, even in Future World, too. I mean, the Butterfly Garden, I know they deem it for kids, but, I mean, I enjoy going in the Butterfly Garden and seeing all the butterflies, too, as an adult. So mm -hmm. um, I think I think. You've picked a great time to go, and I think that there will be tons of activities for you to do, even if you don't plan a thing uh, to when you're walking in the door. You can still have a great time. You're also an adult uh, in a kid size package, too. So, just well, I am. Yes, this is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe, shout out to Dr. Michelle. She is listening in the Garden Grill right now. So uh, she's nice. one of my great guests over at the Magic for Less. So I'm glad you're That's doing awesome. it right. And uh, sneak me some mac and cheese. Mm. It's dinner time here. So, uh, <laughs> mac and cheese. And we'll call it even. All right, Tina's got a question live in the chat. And again, if you want to join us in our chat, we record usually about 5.30 Eastern on Monday night. So drop on in and be a part of the fun. We love this. Uh, Tina says, hey, BOG crew, need help. My daughter has wanted to go on a mom and daughter 21st birthday trip for a while. Got a book with Mike as soon as 2020 packages come out. Yes, thank you. We appreciate that so much. We want to go on a monorail bar crawl and also a special birthday dinner. I'm thinking California Grill. What are your suggestions? Please help. By the way, we are only going down for five days and going to book deluxe dining. Boom. Nice. That's, man, that's a 21st birthday. You know what? Because the next year, 
you're going to feel 22 like Taylor Swift. So do it right Stop. on 21. Oh. All right, Pam. Monorail ball. Cr- you know what? I mean, I've gone through this. This is the weirdest thing ever because I like I feel I still feel 22. I get Taylor. I mean, I can't believe I'm like only 29, but yeah, you know, that's what you are, 29. It's yeah. so weird when your kid turns 21 and you're going on a monorail bar crawl with your kid. That is so bizarre. But give, give either way, give Tina some tips and maybe some life advice because it's. Yeah, weird definitely knows how weird it is having the 29 year old on the bar with you. I had to take, I had to take uh, you know, Paige to Fast Eddie's here in St. Louis, and that's the weirdest thing ever because it's like you know the dive bar go ahead it's funny <laughs> um it is an odd place to be because you feel like you were just there um and, you know it could have been like last week it feels like sometimes so anyways um so i think that's a great idea and of course i'm gonna say california grill a great idea there too um the other place maybe i'd recommend for something like that is narcosis because again you have great views of the fireworks and there's good food there too um, so the bars you definitely want to hit, um, of course you want to go to Misner's at the Grand Floridian and catch either the lovely piano player or the orchestra, cause that's fantastic. Um, and Misner's, um, that bar gives you like a little cup of like mixed nuts and stuff. So hello, it's like a harken back to the old days, right? Um, cause where else do you go and get that now? You know what? The last time I had a bartender give me some uh, peanuts was on the Disney Dream when I was sitting with Scott and we were at the tequila tasting. That's the last thing I remember that night. Have a peanut, Steve. There you go. So anyways, <laughs> yes, it's a good, it's a great place to go. Um, we've always had like really good service there and um, lots of good drink choices. So then over at the Polynesian, you're going to want to go to Trader Sam's because hello, it's Trader Sam's. And of course you have to um, order one of the drinks that makes the lights flicker or the scuba divers come out or the yeah. snorkelers come out or, or something. Um, how about you and, Yes, <laughs> exactly. So those are just fun, fun, fun. And then when you go over to the contemporary, of course, there is a bar there um, that's on the concourse level. But you know where I'm going to suggest you go to the one in the wave. Yeah, because it's blue lights. It's kind of sublime. It's way cooler than the one on the concourse level. Mm-hmm. So we like that one too. There's also one um, available up there at California Grill if you want to do that as well and have a seat at the bar. And then if you want to take another one in, I know this isn't on the monorail ride, um, but you can take a boat from the Contemporary over to the Wilderness Lodge and go to Territory Lounge or Geyser Point. Point. Mm-hmm. I know, and they're all good choices. And now, when are you going to go? Because I want to come do this with you. Yeah, <laughs> I can be your guide. I can be no, your lounge we, guide. <laughs> we've been there. We know how this works. It's the weirdest. I'm telling you, you're going to need moral support. This yes. might be my special power. Like, you know, yes. your superhero power. This could be mine. I'm just saying this could be my special power. So for $12,000, Disney will, uh, you know, uh, let you do a mod- <laughs> you know, customized crawl, wherever you want. I, yeah, I'll charge much less than that. Yeah, me too. And the drinks will be on me. That's it. That's it. I'll go 5000 I'll cover the drinks for the night. And, uh, right. you know, I'll and I'll get you a room. And I'll get you a room somewhere too. So there. You heard it here first. All right, Jessica, one of my great guests over at the Magic Plus as well, fellow runner up in Chicago, been enduring the cold temperatures as well. But we got to get outside this past week, so the runners are pretty happy. She says, any thoughts on how the opening of Galaxy's Edge will affect Marathon Weekend and the crowds for that event? Ricky, what are your thoughts? I mean, we don't really know. I do know that next year, I think, is a one of the anniversary years. I think it's for Goofy. I and a lot right. of things that will drive more runners to try to get that anniversary medal. Cause like 25th uh, marathon medal was unbelievable. So I, uh, you know, who knows? I mean, I, I would imagine the crowds would be crazy every time, but uh marathon weekend, I don't know well, it was down this year though. The crowds for marathon. They were. Um, however, uh, I think she's probably wondering like how maybe marathon will impact galaxy's edge. And if that's the case, it's going to impact it a lot. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, everybody who goes to the marathon will want to see galaxy's edge. Oh, because yeah. It just opened. So I think crowd levels will be um, larger in Disney Hollywood Studios during Marathon Weekend because everybody who's down there is going to want to experience all the new Star Wars stuff. Um, really still have no idea how crowds are going to be. Won't have an idea until, you know, we get there and we get to start seeing how things start shaking out before we can make a really good guess as to how things are going to be. I mean, 
you know, we still don't know. Are we going to see, you know, hour long crowds to get into the land or will that, you know, like we did for the first day of, you know, Pandora, the first couple days, um, or will we see, you know, something where it's, it, it's going to be, you know, just kind of mellow after that first couple days. And, and then I doubt that, but <laughs> you know, like it's, I highly suspect it's going to be like lines waiting to get into galaxy's edge for a while, but, um, and then you'll have to wait in line to get into the land. Um, or I suspect we'll see maybe some hard ticket events to get you into the land or, or something like that. They're going to do something, um, to make it so that guests can see the land and not feel like they waited in line for, hours and then didn't get to see anything. So um, I'm, I am curious to see what they end up doing. I've heard rumors of maybe 24 hour days or, you know, days like where they're open until two in the morning and then open back up at six, seven in the morning. I mean, it, I've really heard things run the gambit. I don't know what they're going to do yet. And you know, I don't think we will know until Disney says what, what they're going to do. <laughs> so the thing you have to remember on a race weekend, though, is that the runners have a smaller window to actually experience the parks, because if you're running a race, you're not going to be to a park typically until like 10 or 11 at the earliest. You're not going to be that rope drop and you're going to bail usually yeah. by seven. You're not going to be in the park past seven. So runners have a smaller window, uh, but it's that midday that's going to just be a whole. Oh yeah. And I would absolutely say like at that, at that point, if you really want to see galaxy's edge, make sure you plan a day either before or after the marathon weekend to make sure that you get into galaxy, you know, galaxy's edge, or at least give yourself a fighting chance because you're it, because of what you said, Mike, that, that it's just a really large swell in the afternoon, your better chance is going to be, you know, a day before or a day after or a couple days before or a couple days after to be able to see galaxy's edge. For sure. All right. So Michael's got a question, a good question here because of stuff that's been happening lately at the Magic Kingdom. Uh, he's asking, guys, is there a set schedule for the rare characters currently in Town Square at Magic Kingdom? Hoping for Phineas and Ferb for my five-year-old. So Ricky, do we know anything? I mean, because they've been taking out like the Zootopia people, uh, Peter Pan, uh, the, uh, the Robin Hood's been out there. Some crazy characters there in Town Square. Any, any uh, rhyme or reason to how this is happening? So yes and no. There is an official schedule. Um, I'm not 100% sure what the schedule is offhand, um, but I do know that there is an official schedule. Um, I would go to guest relations to ask what that schedule is. And also keep in mind, that schedule may change um, as we you know, go through the months. So um, what may be happening right now may not be happening in a month from now. So um, you know, I would absolutely go to guest relations or potentially check the app to see um, what what characters may or may not be meeting. Uh, they only meet at the, um, the flagpole. The, mm -hmm. the limited 10 characters are only meeting at the flagpole. But um, yeah, I think that, although I think somebody did post the schedule potentially in the chat here. Let me see if I can find it really quickly. So they say that Chicken Little and Abby uh, Mallard are meeting on Sundays. Robin Hood and Lil John are meeting on Mondays. Uh, Gideon and Foul Fellow are on Tuesday. Emil and Remy are on Wednesday. Prince John and Far Tuck are on Thursday. And Judy Hopps and Nick Wilde are on Friday. And then I believe Phineas and Ferb are meeting on Saturdays. So I think that might be. But again, the schedule can change. So I would absolutely ask a guest relations if you have a character you want to meet for sure. All right. Good stuff. And Teresa in the, uh, we, I got to read this, this comment in the chat. It's cracking me up. She says, we spend so much time with y'all that we feel like we're your family. Ricky's the fun zany cousin that makes everyone laugh in the family reunions. Mike is the cool uncle who does so much for everyone in the family. Woohoo! And Pam is that best friend. Everybody knows is part of the chosen family. You guys are the best. Aww, the that's family. so nice. I'm the fun uncle. That is nice. <laughs> You're the zany cousin, Ricky. I know. Well, it seems about right for me. So. <laughs> I love I'm gonna, it. I'm not going to deny that one. Let's just be perfectly honest. <laughs> she, she's right. owning it. Let's get to the next question from the inbox. It's uh, titled an Epcot based trip. Hello, be our guest. I'm taking my wife to Walt Disney World for her birthday. The trip dates are June 1st through June 5th. She is a huge Epcot fan, like super huge. <laughs> there is a rare evening, extra magic hours at Epcot during our stay, and we're going to be planning on taking full advantage. We're staying at Pop for budgetary reasons, but I'm thinking about doing a split stay with the boardwalk. My question is, do you think it'd be worth it to only stay one night at the boardwalk? Again, she's a super big fan of Epcot and is looking forward to the extra hours the night will be in the park. 
We're annual pass holders, so park hopping is also something we do a lot of. I love your show. It helps me get through to my next Disney trip. And uh, this is from Belle down in Roswell, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. One of your neighbors, Ricky, right? She is. North. Yep. Your sugar, sugar. Uh, yes. That. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say it. All right. So anyway, uh, did we did we uh, mention that uh, this person is a huge Epcot fan? So that's right. I've done this, and you know what? I've done this on the last like three or four years, where I make sure that I'm staying at an Epcot Air Resort for the night of the fourth because I don't want to have to deal with you know. Well, Ricky took us back one night. We we thank you for that. It was like a harrowing ride. Um, but ever since that night, I've always booked an, a night at Yacht Club or Beach Club or. Uh, no, Mike enjoyed it so much that he's made sure that it will never happen again. I loved it. It was fun. It was like test track, but for real. Like it was. <laughs> kind of fun anyways just so, because yeah, I, that car may or may not have <laughs> almost hit us <laughs> i don't know pam you do the split stays and i think this is a great idea because you know they're staying at pop for budgetary reasons but that one night splurge and if especially if you can catch an annual pass offer like i i caught some annual pass officers for uh, offers for guests just today at boardwalk and i mean it's expensive but if you catch an ap offer it and especially for one night it's not outrageous if you go with the standard view room and it's so nice to walk back to your room it is you know i mean that's my favorite area to stay really is in that epcot area i just like being there um i love being able to walk to epcot um you know when you say what's your favorite theme park i go back and forth between magic kingdom and epcot a lot um because there's just you know i'll have a trip where we do all kinds of epcot things i'm like epcot's my favorite i love yeah. epcot there are so many reasons i love epcot and then we'll do like a trip where we're heavy on the magic kingdom i'm like oh magic kingdom makes you feel like a kid again i love magic kingdom so anyways um those two parks and then i'm like oh but animal kingdom i like you too and then when star wars opens all bets are off so anyways i like how you haven't said anything about hollywood studios now the way it is by the way um, you know what's funny i love baseline tap house so much yes yes they it are. puts it in the running so much so anyways i know right um so but i love doing split stays i love experiencing two different resorts i think it's absolutely a great move to make sure you're experiencing the what would be nicer resort at the end of the stay instead of the beginning it's it's a little hard to fall from grace I will say. <laughs> nothing wrong with that but it ain't boardwalk I mean, no you right know. you you're, you'd just be sitting there being like well, yesterday I was at the boardwalk <laughs> and uh, you know, whatever. Um, one of the things I'll suggest to you is not only do you want to take advantage of that great walk from the boardwalk over to Epcot so that you can enjoy Epcot, but schedule some time at the resort. You know, I say this often, but Disney has some great resorts with some great pools, some great activities and just stuff you want to see. Um, and so make sure you take advantage of that if you're going to spend the night and spend splurge at the boardwalk but go and enjoy it's it, it is worth it. it really is so all right so let's get to another question in the chat it's from Lindsay. i have one day at walt Disney world in epcot while i'm chef while i'm a chaperone at a high school deca competition where should we spend our day park hopping will not be an option selfishly i want to experience toy story land for the first time but is that appealing to teens is there a more appealing park for that age range ricky you're taking teens one day you can't park hop. Where are they going? You know what? Honestly, Hollywood Studios might be a good park to take them to um, because you do have Toy Story Land, um, which has, you know, the fun attractions. Slinky Dog Dash is fantastic. I will say like it it, it looks kitty, but it's not. It has some definite thrill to it. Um, plus, you have Tower of Terror, which is a, a definite thrill attraction. And you have Rock and Roller Coaster, which is a hundred percent a thrill attraction. So, um, and Star Tours, you add that in there. Um, I think Hollywood Studios might be a really good option to choose, to be perfectly honest. You see, I don't, I don't know if I'd have gone with Studios, but that's a good point. If for teens, they might like it. Yeah. There's a I lot mean, of thrill there. Yeah, there is. Fan, what would you say if you had to pick one of the four? Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking as well. And the reason, um, you know, the reasons that Ricky mentioned is that there's a lot of thrill rides, which is a what a lot of teens are looking for. Sometimes you hear the complaint that some teens find Magic Kingdom to be too babyish. I don't really right. think 
that's a huge concern. But if you're thinking at all about, you know, what kind of attractions would appeal to that age range, I think that Hollywood Studios does really encompass a lot. If they like Star Wars at all, having the opportunity to meet those characters, I think is mm -hmm. really a cool thing. Um, I, you know, if I could do lunch with a group of teenagers at 50s, that yeah. would be a fun time mm -hmm. um, thinking about that. So you might want to consider that. Um, you know, sometimes Epcot can be something that teenagers get tired of after a while, right? They feel like you're tricking yeah. them into learning something um, <laughs> about cultures and other things. God so, forbid. Yeah, I know. So anyways, there could be that. Um, the other one, I think Animal Kingdom has some thrilling attractions too, and really has a lot of things to do when you consider Pandora and Everest and, um, you know, all the different animal things. Um, so that might be a choice too, but I think that Hollywood Studios, which, which we were just making fun of, could be the preferred park for this group. So. All right. Good luck with that boy. Taking teens is a harrowing oh, experience. Man. <laughs> good so don't lose anybody all right betsy's got a good question here in the chat and she says and thanks to our chat for being here with us you guys are awesome we love you uh participating in the show with we us. get great we, feedback oh, we man. do well, yeah <laughs> apparently i'm the crazy cousin or whatever <laughs> i <laughs> love that i'm happy yeah. uncle or whatever joanne's loving that funny uncle uh probably funny uncle. Couple, uncle but anyway she says in the past disney's done some kind of free dining before christmas so do you think that because of the opening of Star Wars, we have any chance for that? To be <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so I'm going to address this one to Pam, but I will tell you that, you know, obviously I'm working every day, all day, you know, planning trips and stuff. And I will say that inventory is getting extremely tight for November and December already. And for a discount to be triggered, you know, you got to think about, Disney's a business. So what do they want to do? They want to put beds or heads in the beds. They say they want to get people down there to have great vacations. But if all the rooms are near capacity or at capacity, there is less incentive to put out a great discount, but we don't know Pam, right? I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Because you've been doing this longer than I have. I just can't anticipate that with the um, opening of galaxy's edge coming sometime toward the um, end of the year that that it, there's going to be any way that we'll see a big discount happen um, at that time. I just don't think it will. Um, what I've been advising people is if you want to take advantage of free dining and free dining can save people, especially depending on where they're staying and the number of people staying in the room can be a huge savings. Um, and if you want to do that, if you want to take advantage of free dining, take advantage of it now while it's still available. Um, mm -hmm. Don't count on it being available later. It will be, you know, here's the funny thing. I remember right after 9-11, there were um, definite times when you could get a room like at one of the value resorts for, remember this, like $59 a night. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we became so accustomed to it for a while that... I think at one point Disney had no need to do that any longer. And those rates disappeared. And I think a lot of people were like, Oh, but last year they offered it. So I thought they'd offer it this year. And that's just not the case anymore. Um, so, you know, just think about that. If that's what's most important to you is to secure free dining and pay that discounted price, then go ahead and do it for when it's available this year. I cannot guarantee, and I can't really even fathom that they will be offering that toward the end of next year. I just really can't. Um, and let me tell you, even without Galaxy's Edge, there is still so much to do at Walt Disney World that I think you'll just, you know, you'll see it at some point. I know you will, so. That's true. All right, next question. Go back to the inbox here with a question from Caitlin. Hey, BOGP crew. It's titled Disney Planning Newbie, kind of. I wrote in a few months ago about dining suggestions for a foodie and a picky eater. After all the super great tips and tricks I've learned from your show, we've decided to eat at Olivia's for our arrival day. Oh, I love buttermilk chicken. That's all I got to say. Olivia's so <laughs> good. Uh, she says, my question is in regard to the lunch and dinner dining times. We'd specifically like to enjoy their lunch menu. 
When making an ADR, <clears throat> will the time of the reservation determine the menu or the time your order gets taken at the table? We're hoping to snag the latest lunch ADR, but want to make sure we'll have the choice of the lunch menu. Hope this question makes sense. Thanks for all you guys do. Your show brings the magical dose of Disney to me every single week. And for that, I'm so grateful. Thanks, Caitlin. Well, Caitlin, we're so grateful that you take the time to listen. Thank you so much. So Pam, or Ricky, I don't know, because I've never really thought about this. Well, actually, Ricky, you tend to do the old, now this is the buffet trick, where they do the old switch over to maybe breakfast to lunch or whatever. Right. So two meals in one. But at a place like Olivia's where it has a fixed menu, mm -hmm. what if you have the last like lunch time ADR? Say dinner starts at four, your ADR is at 350. How's that going to work? I never thought about that. Yeah, so I think that it kind of depends on um, the restaurant. Uh, I would think that if you had the ADR at 350, um, try to show up just a little bit early, you know, about that 15, uh, 20 minutes at least early and see if they can get you in. Um, I kind of had this issue, I ran into this issue a little bit when we went to... Um, uh, Alan Compass, because uh, I wanted breakfast, and we had the last ADR of like a 10, uh, 40, 10, 50, something like that when I was just down there, and they delay were a little delayed in seating us, um, so I was a little worried that they were, I was going to be stuck with the uh, lunch menu when I really wanted breakfast. I'm sure they have a little bit of a grace period, let's put it that yeah. way, where if you came in and said, I really wanted the lunch menu, they would still give it to you, especially if your ADR was for the lunch, you know, option. Um, like for me, if I wanted, if they had seated us after 11 o'clock and I wanted the, the, you know, the breakfast menu, I'm sure I could have said, hey, I had an ADR for breakfast. I would like the breakfast option. So that's yeah. kind of how I think that works. And especially a place like Olivia's, I mean, it's not got a huge kitchen. I mean, they just had that. Right that menu there it's like the stuff went away so uh it's true right. and there's actually a burger that my husband loves and mike likes it too called the duval burger mm, so which it has shrimp and avocado on it it's really a good burger um and they actually only offer it on the lunch menu um mm. and the the when we were there really? it, yeah i know right when we were there my husband was lamenting about that um and he was like i love that duval burger and she's like oh we can make that for you so yeah, it was yeah. not a big deal. Um, yeah, the, when Olivia switched to having a very distinct dinner and lunch menu, they took some things, some favorites oh, that were only on the lunch menu. Um, I know. So it was sad. So anyways. Hmm. I will cry if they get rid of the buttermilk chicken. It is so stinky. Yeah, I don't good. think they'll ever do that. <laughs> Welcome home indeed. That's what I say about Olivia's. All right, next question from the inbox. Looks like it's from Michael J. He's 2,333 miles from Walt Disney World. Hey, Mike, Ricky, and Pam, my girlfriend and I are visiting the world this coming May and are interested in attending one of the after hours events at Hollywood Studios. I've noticed that Disney has only added dates up till April. Do you think more dates will be added closer as it, as it gets closer to May? Also, one other question. We have a Garden Rocks dining package at Rose and Crown to see Starship starring Mickey Thomas, the eight o'clock show, and was wondering about the guaranteed seating and how that works. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, is there a certain time in which we should show up to get in line so that we can get a good seat? A huge thank you uh, to the three of you for the amazing work you do. Much appreciated, Michael. All right, first of all, let's talk about the after hours. Man, these things are so popular and I get this question so much. Ricky, what is the story? It's like, I mean, obviously, <laughs> Disney's waiting to see, the, to, to try to anticipate the demand, how they're gonna right. sell these things. But right. what's the story like? Is it still April? Because this came in uh, about five days ago. So yeah, as of right now, of course, again, we mentioned this, they'll change everything yeah, exactly. up <laughs> because we're recording it early. But yeah, as of right now, it's still April. Um, it's one of the frustrating things that happens with these after hours, hard, we, hard ticket things um, like dessert parties, uh, that kind of thing. Disney is really slow on the uptake of Always. posting when they are available. Um, there's uh, it is not 180 days. Everybody expects it to be 180 days because dining is 180 days. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that's not the case for these special events like this. Um, and and it, this goes for these after hours events, early morning magic events, as well as dessert parties. Um, they just don't release this information until usually about two to three months maybe before your trip. Um, so right now, like I said, we have the April time period for um, for this going on at the moment. Um, they'll probably release the May, June options, maybe July here within 
the next month, um, I would assume. Uh, again, that's me assuming I'm not 100% sure because it's Disney and they don't, you know, go on a timetable with these things. It's kind of just when they feel like releasing them, like, ta-da, here you go. Here's So you really, if the, it's unfortunate because you really do have, if it's something that you want to do, you really do have to keep on the ball to see when they get released. Now, the good thing about, you know, the Disney community nowadays is, you know, we'll tell you, when, <laughs> us news people, we'll tell you when this, these things get released and we'll tell you immediately. Um, but, you know, it, so you don't have to keep on the ball as much as you maybe thought you would have. But, uh, you know, it, it really is, it, there is no set time for when they release these things. It's and very it's frustrating. I can absolutely confirm that because, and here's the other thing that makes it even more frustrating. When you call in to book and they say there's no availability, yes. is there no availability of saying, because it was released? Or no availability because it hasn't been released. Like, Correct. which one is it? And they don't know a lot of the time. Yeah. Like, the cast right. members that are taking the dining reservations can't tell. Hello. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. is 2019, people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I think I a man on the moon. We <laughs> cannot <laughs> figure out <laughs> how to tell no people. No availability because it hasn't been released. Or no availability because it has been released and it's sold out. So anyway. correct, which is also frustrating. Yes, I need a new website. I, I, I can't know. even change the gender of a guest online. That has to be a forty-five minute. Uh, you know, if I hit Mister instead of Ms. or something, I mean, that's a forty-five minute of my life. I'm not getting back. This should not be that hard. So don't tell me about this. So. <laughs> I say the same thing. Like we put a man on the moon. I just need to change. I, I had I hit the wrong thing in the drop down box. Why do I have to stop for 45 minutes? I know. I know. I oh, know. Anyway, God, I love you guys. This is so fun. All right, we, this is we really do have a passion for it because there's no way we you put up have, with yeah, it. No, you have to have a passion for it because you don't put up with it any other way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, time for the last question today. It's coming from Cincinnati, Ohio. Jennifer's got a question about her July 4th, 2019 trip. Hi, Mike, Ricky, and Pam. We're getting so psyched for our trip to the world this year on July 4th. We have two girls, 16 and 13, and have been to Disney just about once a year, but have never stayed on property. We are going all out this year with six nights in a one-bedroom villa at the Boardwalk. Oh, there you go. Perfect place to be on 4th of July. Uh, my question is, since arriving on the 4th of July around noon, do you nice. recommend we try to make it to the Magic Kingdom to see the fireworks, or should we stick to Epcot, given that we can walk there from our resort? We know the crowds could be unmanageable on the 4th, so thought maybe Epcot, but of the Magic Kingdom 4th fireworks not to be missed. We are experienced with high crowd days, so this really doesn't scare us. We'd love to hear your opinion. Thanks for keeping me close to the world all year long, Jennifer. All right, Pam, we're going to say the same thing. I mean, you're staying at the boardwalk. You're walking to Epcot. It's the last year for eliminations. This is a no-brainer. It's Epcot all the way, right? I agree. I mean, that's just what it is for convenience, for ease. The beauty of seeing the the fireworks at the Magic Kingdom on a holiday is, hello, you're at the Magic Kingdom on a holiday. It's awesome. I hope you really think it was awesome because it's going to take you a long time to get back to your hotel afterwards. And you just have to be prepared for that. But guess what? You're staying in Epcot Resort and boom, you can walk home. You don't have to wait for a tram or a monorail or a bus or find your car or once you get in your car get taken this really odd way because mm -hmm. Disney has closed roads and you can't take a left from here anymore and whatever so anyways um, absolutely I would do Epcot all the way and the Epcot fireworks are fantastic yes. really really so good and uh, there's um, a comment here from Joe, who is in the chat room, who has asked a couple times when 2020 packages will be coming out. And unfortunately, we just don't know that yet. We're thinking the spring, but Disney hasn't released any information. So, which Sorry. they never do. But what I'm telling everybody is yeah. it's usually like in May, like uh -huh. May, June ish, early June, middle of May. We don't know. But the thing is, like I keep telling everybody, who knows? Because like Halloween tickets went on sale in January. Right? That's exactly. True. Very true. Mm -hmm. You just never know. We'll, we'll definitely let you know as soon as it happens. I mean, just yeah. like social media. I mean, you'll we'll see We'll get it. a little bit of a heads up typically mm -hmm. um, because Disney will let us know, you know, this is when it's coming. They've been good about that at least um, the last couple of years. So, um, but yeah, we don't know yet. Yep. Let's do this. And also before we get out of here today, a shout out to Ashley Lane. She has been listening to the podcast for two years now. 
And she says, we're awesome. My family and I are leaving in 20 days to take my five-year-old niece, Olivia, on her first trip to Walt Disney World. So how awesome Aww. is everything That's made? awesome. I love hearing that. There's nothing better than being at someone who's there for the very first time. They just, you think you know what to expect, but you don't really. So mm -mm. I, I love that everybody takes the time to listen to the show. And, you know, I think that, you know, the three of us, sometimes we get so bogged down and because we've been there so many times, like, what am I going to do? You know, like, are we going to go to Geyser Point? Are we going to go to Baseline Tap House, you know, and do this? Pants and that. going to Baseline. <laughs> but, okay, I, I, know, but I mean, think about it, that there are folks out there listening to the show today, wherever you are, you know, maybe on a run, maybe doing some shopping, maybe on your commute to work, you know, getting excited for that very, very first Walt Disney World experience. And Ricky, I mean, that is a special thing. Think about it. Like, we don't get to have that anymore, but that is such a special time in life. I know there are very few firsts that we get anymore with mm -hmm. Disney. Uh, now, uh, secret, I have a first that's coming up later this year, which I'm very excited about. I'm not going to talk about it yet, but I do have a first. Um, so, um, you know, there are still a few things that we get, but you're right. We don't get that first time uh, very often. And uh, it's, it, it, you know, Sometimes it is hard to remember that first time feeling, but it's the best feeling in the world. I just have to say, like, it really is. It is the best, best feeling in the world. So you're going to have so much fun. You're going to get to see so much and enjoy so much joy uh, with the family. It's just, it's going to be a blast. You know, that that is one of the things, because we went to Universal back in April with the travel agency and, you know, did, did lots of training. But they also gave us free time to go explore. And we had that, you know, the, the free unlimited express pass and so forth. But the thing that I enjoyed the most was that the fact that I didn't know really where anything was like yeah. it was so <laughs> bizarre because even like my Six Flags, I grew up there. Like we had season passes my whole life, you know, so I could go through there with my eyes closed. I can go to now and go to any of the Disney parks with my eyes closed. But like Universal, it was just I, I had no idea where things were. And it was awesome. Like I love the fact right. that I could lost in a theme park and just turn a corner. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, whoa, what's that? You know, hey, I'll try mm -hmm. that. I have no idea what that's going to be. And there's something to be said for that, too. It's kind of the yes. opposite of where we all are right now. So. Yeah. Sure. so hope you have a great trip. All right, don't forget today's show brought to you by the great folks over at virtualmickey.com, home of great iPhone apps like Theme Park News, Disney Edition. What are we reading about on this free iOS app? Ricky, you're up. Well, we are reading about a very large refurbishment uh, that is going to be taking place at a favorite of ours, a Beaches and Cream Center they, shop. Okay, well, at okay, so I, haven't, I haven't heard this confirmed, but are they finally, I've been saying this for five years, are they finally knocking down that wall and expanding into the arcade? <laughs> Dear everyone, please let's make that true. I really, <laughs> really, really all the time. That thing is always empty. And I mean, you take out a wall, you have if, twice the capacity, and it's awesome. What if they do not? It is the dumbest decision Disney has made in a really long time. Because if they're taking it down, they're taking it down for at least six months, by the way. Yeah. So it's gonna be down from August 5th to December sometime in December. Okay. So if they don't tear down that wall and make more seating in that restaurant in a six-month time period, Disney, you're doing it wrong. But Although, think about it, they'd have to I update know. the kitchen because the kitchen's not big enough. <sighs> For something um, that so it might lose some of its it, charm. Just saying, I would. I'm happy either way because I, I, either they are updating other parts of it or not. But yeah, uh, there is always it, that worry. But, I know yeah. that, like everything in the news is about walls lately. I mean, I get it. It's always about a wall. But I'm just saying, for the love of God, take that one down and just make it. <laughs> and you will be able to press You're going to start a different kind of wall oh. debate, my friend. <laughs> look, look, if I have to go in and tear down that wall myself, I will. Let me just give me a hammer. I'll start knocking the wall. All I'm saying is, hey, you want to be the president in 2020? Take down the wall, beaches and cream, man. You're happy. <laughs> right there, you'll be good to go. So I'm sure will be happy to help you <laughs> knock down that wall. I'm just saying. <laughs> so you know, and, and, you know, biting political commentary excluded over on Theme Park News Disney. That's Edition. right. Well, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check it out today. It's uh, great to turn your Apple device into a Disney device. Great apps over at virtualmickey.com. Again, thanks for supporting the show with all of your purchases on Amazon. Just click through beourguestpodcast.com slash Amazon. Give us a follow on the social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at Be Our Guest Pod and at Be Our Guest Mike. And of course, join us in the 8,000 Disney fans over on Facebook, facebook.com slash Be Our Guest Podcast. All right, time to get out of here until we get back together again on Friday, where we're going to talk about taking the toddlers down to Walt Disney World. And even if you don't have kids, 
we promise to make it fun for you. That's what we do. It's not just for the people that have toddlers, but they need it the most, man. I was there. Whew. That is a tough job. Those uh, terrible twos and the terrific, I don't know what the threes are, but they're horrible too. A lot of the time, <laughs> it was just bad. So we're going to have a good time talking about how to get, yeah, have the best trip with toddlers. I, I think tantrum, oh, tri tantrum -rific would be a good word. <laughs> Mallory was a wrecking ball. She still is, but it was even worse back then. So uh, we'll see. So we hope you join us on Friday. So for Pam and Ricky, I'm Mike wishing you a great Wednesday. Time to head back to work. Hump day. And we'll see you real soon. <laughs> All right, save that one. I'm going to run to the restroom real quick because I had two Cokes. Mike thinks he can go to the bathroom? What is this? Right there's, no, the there's no bathroom in podcasting. No, there no there's not. It's going to be squirmy, squirmy. I know I have this big water here, so it's going to be. That's what it is. Actually, I drank yeah. water in the afternoon. It wasn't Coke. Drinking the coffee here, and I keep refilling, so. All right, give me one minute. Okay, bye. It's, it's crazy. It's going to take him a minute. Go, you, no, please wash your hands. He can't hear me. I don't know. <laughs> no. Please, please. Well, you, yeah, wash Lord, your hands. Wash your hands. It's, nobody wants that. With the Royal Caribbean, on, if you've ever taken a Royal Caribbean cruise, they have a cute little video and song about washing your hands. Oh, there's a song. You'll have to look for it. It's on YouTube. People love it that oh, much. It. Oh, that'll be yes. fun. Okay. I know. I will search for this. So, are I you know. excited about the beaches and cream refurbishment, Pam, or do you think that it? I'm fine either way. I mean, I I will tell you, I think at some point in time, their burgers used to be better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they probably made some, some choice based on some kind of healthy mm, food maybe. standard that yeah. they're trying to do, which is all well and good. But if you're going to get burgers and ice cream, I think you know that it's probably not healthy. So well, they could have yeah. just, just left that alone. Like, I don't know. That's, so. that's true. It's like yeah, I'm not onion rings. I'm like, I'm ordering the healthy onion rings. I'm not, yeah, I'm not going there for health options. It's not happening. I'm getting a giant ice cream sandwich, like a bowl of ice cream. Right, it's right. not, you know, You're Sunday. eating the no way, Jose, until your stomach hurts. Let's just, but anyway. Exactly. It's not. I think it's such a cute little place, and it's really part of, it fits in with the theme of the beach club, I think, so. Absolutely. I agree. And hopefully, if they do expand, it'll keep the, the charm. The, that that's what I hope they can do too. That kitchen really needs expanded because it's actually really on display yeah. there. Their grill is yeah. out there where everyone can see it. So that's true. That's true. Yeah. They do. There yes, are new do. places to eat in Walt Disney World every time I go. So if something happens with this one, I'll grieve for a moment and then I will move on to the next place. So I can still, I can still <laughs> no way, Jose. Maybe I'll really get one a little easier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll make you one the next time you come here. So, okay, that sounds good. Uh, let's I see. So a shout out, I got to give a shout out to Jocelyn for making my awesome signature in my um, email, which I couldn't figure out how to do for three hours one day. And I got so mad because I'm terrible at expelling. It took you three hours? Okay. Dude, good I job. figure out the cells and the disappearing lines and everything was not in the right. She did it like in five minutes. And also, Jocelyn has the coolest backdrop because she's like, Hannah had this cool wood backdrop, which is behind Pam right now. So, of course, Jocelyn had... Cinderella Castle behind her. I'm like, holy cow, what is that? <laughs> I know, right? Oh. It was fancy shamancy. Oh my gosh. It's like, it's better than like Channel 4 here in St. Louis. I'm just saying. I actually have four different wood backgrounds. I've been using this one lately. I have a lighter one and then a couple other medium ones, but <laughs> I have other backgrounds that are coming, not Disney. Oh. They're not Disney centric, but there could be maybe like bricks showing up. <gasps> Uh, I, have, I have bricks. I because I have mine down here. I just don't have it hooked up. Like I have. This is very helpful. <laughs> I, I have like redwoods. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah, that's similar to mine. Yeah. yeah, and I got that color. I got I got some bricks. I feel like I'm. I could do senior pictures on the side. Like you can. Oh, no, seriously. <laughs> but what's funny is, um, in my house, I have a wall that looks like what is behind yeah. me so exactly. i mean it actually only mine has more variation in the wood it actually is a wall that you know uses a whole bunch of different kinds of wood that oh, are behind there so anyways but i can't really like um you know camp out right there like near my family room and be like no. to my family everyone be quiet for the next two and a half hours <laughs> right exactly i just remember i used to yell at my family like it's podcasting night. Everybody, you got to be quiet for two hours. Don't walk above me. 
<laughs> no, it's like whatever. I got a better <laughs> mic. You can't hear stuff like you're talking right into it. Right. It's for the studio. Nice. I am your father. Good job. All right, so let's do toddlers because apparently we have lots of folks going down. Kate's going down with the toddler. Mallory's going That's down right. with the toddler. Good luck to you. Yeah. Because remember, here's the thing: I'll save it for the show. And we yeah, save it for the show. Romantic. So let me forget the is this romantic stuff. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. We got to mention oh. is this romantic. Oh whoa, whoa, Joey, whoa. Whoa! <laughs> and to think he was a Chippendales dancer. I, no I did not know this. Uh, you know, they did make a, it was it was funny. They did make a young Sheldon joke about. Well, it was t- talking about Joey, uh, and he was on Blossom, and it was it just made me laugh because you know my umbiolic is on uh, Big Bang oh, Theory. Right. So it was just a, it was right. a cute, funny, funny joke that they made that kind of tied it all in together. I laughed really hard. <laughs> Too they mentioned her and they said yeah she's the one that wears the hats and i just laughed really hard <laughs> that's funny all right let's do this one yep 1444 here we go <clears throat> welcome to episode 1444 of the be our guest walt disney world trip planning podcast i'm your host mike rawman from be our guest podcast.com and one of the senior agents over at the magic for less travel I told you at the top of the show, you made it. Congratulations. Happy Friday. We're glad you're here. And uh, we're kicking off the weekend early as we do with some fun Disney talk. And today we are helping you plan a better Walt Disney World vacation. That's why we're here. And we're getting feedback from our live chat here on Facebook to give tips for taking the toddlers to Walt Disney World. And let me just say on that topic, I have one piece of advice right off the top of the show. One thing to remember when you take a toddler, and I've been there. And sometimes my 11-year-old still acts like a toddler at Walt Disney World. If you've traveled with me, you know that. <laughs> Even my 22-year-old sometimes acts like, you know what? If I don't eat enough, sometimes I act like a toddler. But here's yeah, the thing to remember. Fast. Remember, if you're taking a toddler to Walt Disney World, they are in control of the trip. You are not. <laughs> I'm just saying, just, but we're going to try to swing the power back around on today's show. Uh, a couple of programming notes right off the top of the show. Uh, first of all, Next week, we're going to kind of reverse the order of the Wednesday and the Friday shows. We're going to flip them around because of Valentine's Day. Wednesday, we're going to do our annual Is This Romantic podcast where you submit (laughs) situations down at Walt Disney World that could be of questionable romanticness. And we will, (laughs) as a triumvirate here, we will determine if that is a great romantic (laughs) idea. Or if you may need to go back to the drawing board with that situation to maybe spice it up a little bit more to make it romantic. So, for example, you know, I put this on the Facebook page, you know, a foot long hot dog, two Cokes and uh, some sauerkraut at Casey's. Is this romantic? I mean, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not. We would we would we would judge that and talk you through it. I think the sauerkraut, sauerkraut kind of acts as <laughs> the sauerkraut kills that. <laughs> Take that off the, the like, table, you might yeah, have an idea. Okay, I can go with that. Chili dog, even with cheese, still okay. Yeah, still okay. The when sauerkraut, the sauerkraut goes it. on, the romance goes with it. You've got it. <laughs> Same with onions. Getting. If you're putting yeah. onions on, it goes out the window, too. Just saying. And, yeah. and that's yeah. what you're getting next Wednesday to get you ready for Valentine's Day next Thursday. Yes. So we need your help. We need your help right away this weekend and early next week week because remember we record on mondays we need you to use hashtag is this romantic with a situation down at walt Disney world you want us to judge you can also drop by the facebook page we'll have a thread going on facebook so you can use twitter or facebook or if you see one of our posts on instagram put it in the comments we'll check all the social media but give us some and that's going to be what we use on wednesday friday we'll flip to the listener questions so we'll have yes. everything there just kind of a little bit out of whack next week for valentine's day but anyway today we're talking toddlers and joining me today to give some tips we have ricky from a disney world after all.com touring plans.com and the mouse for less happy friday ricky Happy Friday! Yay! Uh, I'm excited. Um, I get to dress up tonight. So um, it's Brian's annual uh, work party celebration, and uh, I get to get all fancy and dressed up, and I'm kind of excited about it. I don't get to get dressed up like this very often, so I'm, I'm happy. It's, it's going to be a good night. 
you guys will be doing the senior picks, the prom picks, like you always do. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There will be prom pictures uh, because I bought oh, a brand new dress, awesome. and uh, I'm I'm ready to show it off. So I bought actually I bought two dresses because I liked both of them so much. So now I have one for next year. Uh, but yeah, I'm 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 really excited about my dress. Can you it's do perfect. superlatives too, like after you're done? <laughs> like I I think that's one of the things that makes a yearbook. Like you got to do the picture and then have absolutely most likely to. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going with sauerkraut or whatever. Exactly. <laughs> that would definitely be Brian and I. Uh okay, yeah. Okay. So um yeah, I'm 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 really excited about getting all dressed up and yeah, prom pictures galore tonight. <laughs> so, will Brian be bringing home a corsage, a wrist corsage or the uh, Oh my gosh, you know yeah. what that is funny is he's <laughs> joked, at least I hope joked, about the fact that he's going to buy me a corsage. Yeah. I'm like, please don't buy me. Corsage. <laughs> like. That's right. Is this romantic a corsage is always yes. romantic. <laughs> Especially with her. So I may or may not have a corsage if he actually decides to it. He'll probably forget and it. or not do it, but um it may it happen. I don't carnations. know. It has to be carnations. Absolutely. It, it would have to be out. carnations. But then I'd feel really weird wearing the corsage on my arm. So oh, I don't you know. Do As it. An adult. You do it because he was thoughtful. And it's gotta have baby's breath. Whatever baby's breath yes. is. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> anyway. Also joining us, Hit the Coder, the Magic for Less Travel Fan Forest Reporter, going down uh memory lane here today. For sure. I swear I went to dances where I'm like at the floral shop like and I would like his boutonniere to match my dress. Yes. Which is like a burgundy. It's not like a bright burgundy. It's like a dark burgundy. So I want the rose that's in it with the baby's breath to match my dress. And then when he comes in to order mine, it should be da -da -da -da. So anyways, <laughs> I mean, you know, of course you had to do Got that. Got it. Awesome. I will not be buying Brian a boutonniere. It's just not happening. <laughs> <What>? So... <laughs> <laughs> what? What? Not happening. After he's so thoughtful and hinted that he might be getting your corsage. What the heck, Ricky? So anyways. It's not happening. <laughs> next time we're all at Disney World, corsages and boutonnieres for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a senior <laughs> photo shot. Absolutely. Those, those were the days, though, when those were the biggest, uh, the most stressful things in our lives. We're like, oh, my gosh, I got to get the right corsage for prom. Yes. Oh, it'll it's be true. rude. <laughs> It's true. Oh, I'm going to start working on my pose now. It's going to be okay. go. <laughs> All right, let's get to the topic at hand. We're talking toddlers today, taking toddlers down to Walt Disney World. And of course, when you think of toddlers, here's the, here's the good thing, because if you've had a toddler, which I have and Pam has, and I'm sure, Ricky, at some point you'll be blessed with a toddler. Know, <laughs> God, I hope, because I want to mess with that kid. And just, <laughs> it's, nothing, it's nothing better than when your friends have like little kids and you can just like give them candy and sugar and stuff. That's right. <laughs> oh, I can't wait, man. It's going to rock. Uh, yeah. That's going to be so fun. <laughs> but uh, and thanks. Have it. it's going to be great. This will be like oh, awesome. Uncle just, Mike right there, as we said I'm on. really week. excited That's about right. this prospect now. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. Uncle Mike oh, and oh, Aunt yeah. Pam are going to be two very bad influences on oh, my no. potential future Guaranteed. child. Oh, Guaranteed. <laughs> so, the, the best benefit of taking a toddler to Walt Disney World is, of course, if you're a Disney fan, you know that until the age of three, children are free for admission to the Disney theme park. So that has some advantages. Obviously, it's a cost advantage. Um, one of the questions I get sometimes, Pam, let me ask you about this because there isn't really a definitive answer with Disney, but I've seen this question come up actually in my work as a travel agent and just online and social media. It's because my kids are tall. My, you know, my kids, I'm six, three, my kids have been tall. Some people ask, you know, well, I have a two-year-old who's really tall and looks like they're four. Does Disney ever like challenge that? I mean, I know there's like, you know, it's kind of an honesty is the best policy kind of thing. But I mean, what, what advice do you give somebody that does have a kid? I mean, Mallory looks older than she does right now at 11. You know, it's like, what do you do in that kind of situation? Yeah, it's so here's the thing that I think is the easiest way to do it. If it's something you're even concerned about or thinking about, pull out their old birth certificate, snap a photo of it, keep it on your phone in your favorites, you can easily find it. And then boom, you have the proof right there. Disney absolutely can challenge it. Is it something that they do all the time? No, I don't think so. But it's absolutely in their prerogative to do so. I mean, you know, the cutoff is <laughs> this, your right. child has to be this age or younger. So they're perfectly within their rights to ask. So just save the stress and don't think about it again by taking a picture of that birth certificate. Yeah, if a kid's got a mustache, you know, don't try it. <laughs> <laughs> 
even though I did have friends, I did have friends like in elementary school, like the sixth grade that had mustaches, and I was always jealous. <laughs> you can't grow mustaches. Mike, you can't grow mustaches. <laughs> yeah, mustaches. You better start growing for your senior picture, or you're not gonna get like best facial hair. You know what? There was no friends that had mustaches back in sixth grade. They're all bald now. You know what? Now I have to go to great for the three weeks. So yeah. <laughs> That's how that goes. I got plenty of hair. All right. Anyways, let's talk toddlers. So, another question that we get about toddlers is dining, and especially if you're using the Disney dining plan. So, Ricky, address that off the top of the show. When you're on a Disney dining plan, obviously a toddler is on the reservation. They might be on the room reservation, but they right. don't have tickets and they don't have dining plan entitlement. So, how does that work? Right. So they don't have dining plan entitlements, but they get, I mean, it's not like Disney's going to say they can't eat. Um, now, if you do get like a meal, like an actual meal, um, you know, at a, at a, a table service restaurant or something like that off the kids menu, then you will likely have to pay for that. Right. I, I know that with buffets, they don't let make you pay. But with like, yeah, if, if they you're order buying an actual, them their own meal, then yeah, if you're buying them their own meal, them. yeah, absolutely, right, exactly. Yeah. Now they can eat off your plate at mm -hmm. say a you know a table service restaurant or a buffet, um, yep. but they can't like have you if you once you order a a specific meal for them, they can't yeah they can't uh, you have to pay for that meal. So um, just yep. keep that in mind. Um, okay, yeah, what are your that's thoughts? What I thought yeah, I mean, I, I think that's something you're going to want to consider, you know, is your child like we have people that come to us and say, like, my child legit eats more than yeah. more than my his sister brother. My coworker, he talks about it all the time about his two twin toddlers are like just ravenous machines. They eat more than he does. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so does <laughs> so yes. um, if that's the case, you're going to want to consider getting them their own meals, just ordering them. And typically what you can do, although there really isn't a dining plan workaround for that in that case, um, because in order to get one of the dining plans, you have to be of a certain age. And then right. if you are of that certain age, then you would have to buy tickets. So the best news is what you should do is get the dining plan for those who um you know, really qualify for it and then just pay out of pocket for the kids meals. Yeah. So. I will say, I remember when Mallory was, now this isn't like when she was two, this was probably when she was, you know, maybe nine months old to one when she was just starting to eat. Like, I remember like she would just supplement during meals. Mm -hmm. if, like, you know, I guess she was still in bottles. I'm terrible at this stuff, but she was eating like Cheerios and stuff, you know, like mm -hmm. some transitional foods. And uh -huh. Disney would bring out like applesauce or something like that. And they never right. charged us for it. I mean, they'd be like, just, you know, does the baby want applesauce? And, uh, you know, I remember a table serve that we never got charged for that stuff. I mean, I wouldn't expect I it, but it did happen. I'm sure that Disney has some discretion of, you know, the cast members have discretion of what mm -hmm. they can do. I mean, they're not going to let your poor baby starve. <laughs> well, it's, you know, you're sitting there and, you know, in that situation, they, they definitely try to offer something. But yeah, they're not going to just make it sit there while you're eating. So do we have any other tips as far as getting your toddler through dining? Because here's the thing about Walt Disney World and dining. I just want to start here because I think this is one of the most stressful times to have a kid at Walt Disney World. Because when you're at a theme park and you're not dining and you're kind of running around, there's going to be challenges there. But at least they're outside. It's, you know, there's restaurants tend to be quieter, you know, more tight with everybody sitting at a table. And when a kid throws a fit in a restaurant, that's just, that's bad news for everybody. You know, the waiter, the waitress, the people around you, of course, your family. Um, Pam, what did you learn over the years as far as getting, because, you know, as fun as dining is for the adults, it could be a torturous 90 minute experience for a two year old. <laughs> what do you, what do you suggest, Pam? So there's a couple of things. First of all, you all know the kind of snacks that your child really likes. And it's the kind of snacks that like you pull out like in case of emergency, right? We all had them. Maybe they were Cheerios. Maybe they were goldfish crackers. Maybe they were little bits of apple, whatever it is, make sure you bring those with you or order them from like garden grocers or something like that. So you have a very good supply of these things and you carry with them with you often. You like do not run out of these things. 
you can bring those things into the park with you because I yep. know a lot of people question, can I bring food into the park? Yes, you absolutely can. So if yep. you need little snacks like this or granola bars or whatever, you can bring those in with you. So I just wanted to specify that real quick. Right, absolutely. So you can bring those in. You can also bring in whatever they like to drink and things like that. So don't be afraid to do that. That's absolutely within your right. So make sure you do that. Um, something that we did when Hannah got a little older and we were going to a table service restaurant or someplace where we really wanted her to be quiet, um, we could usually entertain her until our food came out. And we would say, um, you know, when our food comes out, bring her ice cream. And then, or whatever dessert that, she that's wanted. That's a good right there. <laughs> and then she had the ice cream. We had our food. We either would get her, like, something after that, or, you know, let's say we got her something before. I mean, come on, you're all on vacation. Everybody wants to have a little something. Um, you know, so think of that. Um, another issue that we ran into um, was she was eating a lot of chocolate milk and a lot of macaroni and cheese, which she did not get at home. So be aware that if your child's on a very varied diet from what they get at home, that will cause other things, you know, reaper that could cause other More repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in mind and think about it. Like try to put get in, you know, some stuff like if they always eat such and such at breakfast, make sure that they have that. If they always get some fruits and vegetables, get those in at some point during the day. Even if you don't order from like garden grocery or something like that, um, there are fruit stands and there are things yeah, like that where absolutely. you can pick stuff up. So remember that. And if worse comes to worse and you're at a restaurant and you're dying, ask a cast member for help. Like, do you happen to have fill in the blank, whatever your child really mm -hmm. enjoys eating? Um, like Mike said, the cast members have some discretion at that, and I'm sure that they'll try to help. So, um, yeah. I always, yeah, I always call that, I was, Pam, when, when the kids are eating what they're not used to eating and they get in, it, when I was uh, finishing up my teaching career and I had like 79 sick days still, so I took a couple at the end there, but I would put on the line in our sub uh, computer thing, I called it gastrointestinal distress. <laughs> there, no. there, I mean, there are, and what's funny is when Hannah was little, this is going to be so TMI, but when Hannah was little, <laughs> I love this story then. She never had diaper rash, but when we were on vacation, that was the one time that she did get it because of whatever. She was still in a diaper. Like, she was little, little. So, yeah. I mean, just be prepared for things like that. They're going to be eating weird stuff, and things get crazy, just like they do with adults when you're eating Well, yeah, stuff. we're eating weird stuff, too. Uh, and so. one other thing I want to suggest, too, is, um, you know, you may get the menu of what they have and not – if they're, like, really – picky you know and they don't like anything that's on the menu but they say they don't have mac and cheese on the menu but that is what they want and you go to this restaurant you can ask if they can make mac and cheese and more than likely they will happily oblige and bring you mm -hmm. said mac and cheese so um for those you know food specific things like for picky eaters like that or if they only eat <laughs> chicken nuggets mike uh for, for page um if you ask for that you can absolutely they will absolutely do what they can to get that for you i mean they they understand the the, the picky eater thing um with with toddlers and and even young children and even 22 year olds or however yeah, it's embarrassing when you gotta ask for chicken nuggets for your kids and drinking a beer with you <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. A little strange. Okay. So, uh, Greg's got a great comment in the chat, and we appreciate our chatters again. Mondays around 5:30 Eastern, we record these live, and he says we went with our 15 month year old. Do the buffets where the food comes out quick, or places where the food comes out quick. That's you're right. Speed is of the s, or you know, you just want to get the food to the kids. And Helena says quick service places are awesome for toddlers because they're usually so busy, and there's a lot of background noise. No one seems to care when the kids have meltdowns. Definitely bring all the snacks too. It helps a ton. And you know what? I say everybody should bring snacks because you could be stuck in a 90 minute line and you maybe some goldfish will tie Absolutely. you up to your lunch. You know, I, sure. I'm all about that. So uh, what other, so let's, let's get outside the dining, but I want to start there because that's where I always uh, see a lot of uh, issues with toddlers. Ricky, what about just touring the parks and maybe what to bring other than snacks or just tips for somebody taking a toddler for the first time? I mean, you absolutely want to make sure that you have the essentials. So, you know, if you, it, 
you've got the diapers or you've got, you know, sippy cups or, you know, bottles if they're still doing that or, um, you know, make sure you bring those. And I know that it's hard, but make sure you bring extra. If you need to have them delivered, you know, Garden Grocer or Amazon or something like that is a great option. Make sure you have those that done. It's just going to save you room in your luggage. And then you make sure that you have those things while you're there. And I know it's kind of a pain, um, but, you know, you do need those things. So um, if for some reason you run out of something or something like that, the great thing is, is you're not, you know, out anything. You can actually go to the um, baby care centers, um, which are, there's one in each park, um, and they will happily um, help you. Um, now, those are great for, you know, moms in general, if they're nursing or whatever. Um, they can change a diaper in there if they need to, or, you know, um, they do sell some items. So if you've, you know, run out of something like formula or diapers or whatever, they are more than happy to oblige and sell you those items. <laughs> so um, just know that you'll have to pay for, for the, anything like you've forgotten like that. But um, they'll be happy to, to help you. Um, another thing that I see is kind of a common thing and, and um, something that a lot of people don't think about <laughs> is um, make sure that if you have a, make sure you bring a stroller because you're going to need it. Um, if you have a stroller though, uh, and, and you've rented it, make sure you know how to fold said stroller down. Um, because let me tell you, they will yell at you if you don't fold the said stroller down. Um, I witnessed this firsthand a couple of weeks ago when this gentleman kept trying to fit his stroller onto the tr parking tram full, like, you know, not broken down because he couldn't figure out how to break down the stroller. Poor guy. I'm like, he said that, I mean, he was trying for a good five Come minutes and the, and the cast members sitting there yelling at him because he keeps trying to pick the stroller up and put it in the tram and the cast members like, sir, you have to take your stroller down. You can't put a stroller on I felt awful for him too I don't know if he ever I don't think he ever managed to, to get the stroller on I think the cast member might have just had mercy and just let him do what he was doing <laughs> up to the back and just dragged it like a trailer I mean come I on know, right? I don't know but just kind of make sure that you know how to break down the stroller um, make sure also that you can take the things you, you're gonna have to take the baby out of the stroller so make sure you do that <laughs> make sure you take the things that are in the stroller out of there and then another really helpful tip that I think uh, people don't think about is if you're going through uh, security, uh, you are going to have to have that stroller checked. So that means that if there are bags in the stroller, please take those bags out of the stroller and have them ready for the Disney security to uh, check those because they're going to have to check them. Um, and I've been behind many a stroller where they didn't realize that they were going to have to check, you know, they had the purse all ready to go, but they didn't realize that the bag in the stroller was going to have to be checked as well. So just make sure you have any bag you possibly have ready to go and checked because they will have to check that for you. I will say when you're talking about strollers, we got some great comments I want to share here in the chat in a second. But what we learned is, you know, and I've said this on the podcast before, obviously we've been doing it over a decade now, but when, when we had Mallory and we were getting ready to go for that first trip, I researched strollers like you would research a sports car. And I found this stroller and we spent like 250 bucks on this umbrella stroller I still remember because it's still in the back of the trailblazer. It was called a McLaren and it was a really, really super nice, um, like British made umbrella stroller. But the thing was we used it for like five years and many trips and it paid for itself because it was super light, folded up easy, you know, and it, we used it all the time. Here's a tip though, for those folks that are taking, cause you get to the point where you're trying to decide whether your kid needs a stroller or not. You know, it's like they're five or four. I don't know what, whenever, because I mean, the thing you got to remember about Walt Disney World, even if your kid isn't using a stroller at home, they're also not walking like they do right. at Walt Disney World. They got a lot of I stuff. I don't on. walk like I do until yeah, I'm at Walt Disney World. So yeah. even when your kid is probably what you deem too old to need a stroller anymore, a lot of times what we would do, especially like at the Magic Kingdom, is we'd take the stroller to the park. We would park it at the front of the park, like say over by um, the meet and greet for Mickey or Tinkerbell at the Magic Kingdom. We'd park it in that area and we would just leave it there and go without it. But the thing was, when we needed it later in the day or at night, we had it in the park. We could easily go retrieve it. Mallory had a place to chill and she had a good spot. If we didn't need it, we grabbed it on the way out of the park. It was right as we left. So even if you're like in that transitional area, it's a good idea to take the stroller, park it in the park. Don't even use it until you need it, but it's there because you don't want to need it later and not have it. That's a tough situation. So uh, uh, Pam, anything else kind of along these lines is getting around the, the theme parks? 
Just, you know, I, I think the stroller is a great idea. Um, even if you don't think that you're going to need it, bring it anyway. Um, or rent one. Um, there's some great stroller vendors um, I know that we work with that will drop the stroller off at your resort and then we'll come pick it up. I think it's always better to rent from an outside vendor than it is to get the strollers in the parks because then you have it around the resort. You have it at Disney Springs. You have it. You aren't waiting in line to get a stroller at the beginning of the the day and you aren't waiting to drop it off it's not the hard plastic right. stroller that disney has it either it is um so i think that those are are you know great tips too to make sure the stroller is key it's just a key part of the situation so i got to get to these comments real quick before we give some more of our tips joanne says table service places bring princess haley's meals right away i mean she probably runs Hi. the restaurant though haley is just too darn cute <laughs> <laughs> so she probably gets whatever she wants. She also says hang out in the baby center. Those things are so, you know, if you're having a child that's, that's just needs uh, to get away from the stimulus of a, yes. a Disney theme park. And if you're the parent that needs to get away from the stimulus of your mm -hmm. meltdown toddler and everything else going on, go to a baby care center. They are, they're tranquil. They're quiet. They're awesome. I remember going in there with a, uh, uh, Pam, uh, Amanda says the garden grill is their favorite place for value and less intense for any kiddos that might get easily overstimulated. Uh, any toddlers, she says her son is five and has sensory processing issues at times. Perfect place for a party of 10 for his fifth birthday lunch. So there you go garden grill, you know, you got the characters coming around, you're rotating. It's kind of, it's not real quiet in there. It's a good idea. I like it. Yeah. Uh, Amber says she likes the Zoe stroller and she says it's easy up and down, huge canopy to block the sun, very lightweight. Oh, Amanda's bringing up one more thing for dining. I, I had this on my list. I didn't I get to it. it. Mobile ordering. Now, this is, yeah. I hate to say it because I don't want everybody in the world using mobile ordering because then it's not as effective for me as a Disney fan. But you know what? We're, an, we're a family here. We're in Ohana. Even if you don't have kids, Please use mobile ordering. I use it over Marathon Weekend. It was so odd. You want to feel like a rock star? Order that stuff. And I think the thing too with kids is the less uh, you know time you have to wait for anything to happen, the, the better off you're going to be with a, with a kid. Because when they, when they say they're hungry, that means they were hungry 30 minutes ago. They're like starving at that point. So Pam, I mean, I, I say mobile order every single time because then you can kind of get your kids you know what they like, but you can put it right there on the app. Boom, you check in. I'm here. Boom, they make your food and you got it within three minutes. Yeah, it's a great, I mean, I think that, you know, in all the things that have come out of using My Disney Experience and, and other things like that in terms of being able to make dining reservations on the app, one of the greatest things is being able to mobile order. And I think more people really need to use it. I don't know if they're just not familiar with it or not sure how to use it. Um, but you can use it now when you're on the dining plan. So that's a big plus. I know for a while you weren't able to do that and now you can. So, um, just keep that in mm -hmm. mind, but mobile order, anything you can do to take time out of waiting for something when you're traveling with toddlers is a very, very good thing. Ricky, didn't they just uh, update my Disney experience in the past week to include things like Dole Whips and, you know, snacks now in the mobile order? I thought I saw that somewhere. Um, I know that they just updated the app or they are working on it. I don't know exactly. I know it rolled out first for Disneyland and then it was going to roll out um, for Walt Disney World a little bit later. So I haven't had the opportunity to really dive into it. Um, but yeah, I, again, like you said, mobile order is absolutely key, even for grumpy adults who want to have a food so <laughs> I'm a toddler when i'm hungry man it's like i'm a snick i'm a walking snickers commercial yes. all right now, helena also says the midday break is also key with toddlers i know mike's a big fan of the pool nap break you know it without that time to decompress and nap i don't think the whole day would be possible i cannot agree enough and i think adults can do this to their advantage that depends I think with the kids, it's a necessity every single time. I think the most important thing with kids is to keep them on a similar schedule to what they're used to. Um, if they take naps at home, they better take naps at Walt Disney World or else you are just running for Meltdown City, say around four o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but I think it's great for, for adults too because we're trying to give everybody something in today's show. And I think what a midday break does, say you're just a couple going down there for a week. Now, I don't do the midday breaks over marathon weekend because obviously I'm back in the hotel room at 7 or 8 o'clock to go to bed, getting up at 2.30 in the morning, so my schedule's all off for that weekend. But if I'm on vacation, what I like to do is rope drop a park, get out of there by like noon or 1 o'clock, back to the hotel. I take a nap. The girls usually swim or do whatever they want to do. And what that does, it, it does a couple things. First of all, it gets you off your feet during the hottest part of the day when it's hot down in Florida. It also 
like you said, you can decompress. And what it does for me, it resets my day because I go to a different park in the evening. So I get like a Magic Kingdom experience in the morning, maybe a Disney's Hollywood Studios experience at night. And it makes it like two days in one, but I'm refreshed for the evening. I get, grab a shower before I go back out if it's hot in July, you know, and I change clothes and I'm fresh and I'm ready for a great night. So Pam, I know you're an advocate of this, keeping the kids on that same schedule. I think that's crucial for toddlers. Um, heck, I think keeping people on the same schedule is crucial for adults. Yeah. I mean, you know, it just is. You get tired and you're walking around so much. So it's just something to think about, you know, realize that you may be staying up a little late, but compensate by letting yourself sleep in a little bit later, too. Um, I think that's important. But yes, especially for kids, it's very important to make sure that they're getting the sleep that they're used to. Um, I think so many times kids today just don't nap as often as they should. There's so much stimulation in their lives. They don't get time to uh, learn how to self-soothe and, and things like that, right? And so they need you as parents to help them do that. Um, and one of the things we used to do, this is crazy, I can remember doing this the first couple times we took Hannah, it was really challenging to go back to the room and take a nap. She just didn't want to do it. And some kids don't have a problem with it. Um, if we had her, we brought her actual stroller that could lay the whole way down. And we put a blanket like over her. She would fall asleep. It was just like the motion. And on one of her first trips, she was so little and we were desperate. I knew that if she did not sleep, things would go very, very bad. We got in the car and drove around. Um, and we did that a couple times. It it just happens. It's the stuff that you do for your kids. Um, but that's absolutely important to just try to keep them on that same schedule. And one of the things kind of on that same note, you drove Hannah around to kind of soothe her and get her away from all the stimulus. You know, Walt Disney World has amazing transportation options. So it'd yep. be very simple to, you know, say you're at Epcot and you just need a little downtime, just jump on that boat to the studios. That's 45 minutes of sitting on a boat and the kids enjoy, it, especially toddlers. They love like trains and boats and mm -hmm. monorails. I mean, the thing is, just go do a couple loops on the monorail loop. I mean, I still remember when I went down in fifth grade, like the monorail was one of my favorite things we did. I didn't know it was an attraction. It was cool. You know, I'm from Missouri and it still is one of my favorite things. So I would say, you know, even, and especially I remember uh, Mallory telling me one of her favorite things was riding the buses because she didn't have to sit in a car seat, you know, when she was like three, you know, <laughs> right. in a seat like a big girl and talk to people. I mean, she, she enjoyed that. So uh, don't discount the Disney transportation. So we're going to, let's throw it. We got about uh, five or 10 more minutes. Let's throw in a couple more tips to help folks out. What do you think? So I think that, you know, a, one of the things that um, is, is so big, and I have a, a friend who's actually taking a trip down uh, to Walt Disney World, and she's spending, uh, you know, a little bit of time there. And actually, Mike, you're helping her. Um, <laughs> but she wanted to know what to do uh, for the, the day. Uh, they're going on a cruise, and she kind of wanted to know what to do for the day. And one of the things that I told her, and it's things that I think that people don't really think about is, you know, go – especially at like Epcot, you know, I know a lot of people think that those parks are, are not for kids, you know, but there really is a lot of things that, that they're for kids, you know, go to the, the seas with Nemo and, you know, yeah, you've got the, the attraction there, but you've also got something like Turtle Talk with Crush, which, you know, is such a perfect thing for children. I mean, really, I think so many people forget about that attraction that it even exists, but, you know, there's something so special about having your child be able to ask Crush an actual question and have him answer back. Um, there's all the the exhibits that are that are in that pavilion as well of of you know the the sea life that's there and and everything that you can explore that there's so many people kind of i think rush by so much um that's perfect for toddlers you've got the whole area in uh, the imagination um, section, which is, you know, great for toddlers too at the end of the attraction. Um, there's just so many of those, those little things like that, that I think that um, people forget about. They even have, you know, especially for the festival season, um, although I think now it might be a permanent addition, um, they have a Wreck-It Ralph um, like jungle gym uh, play area that's over uh, kind of by test track that you can go um, have your, your your child play on. Um, I know that it's there right now. Um, I suspect it'll be there through a flowering garden because usually they have some sort of um, play 
area over there for that. Um, you know, don't forget about the um, the the splash, uh, the the pop, pop jets that are in Epcot, or uh, don't forget about the ones that are at the Magic Kingdom back at Storybook Circus. And by the way, if you're doing those, make sure you have a change of clothes because yeah, they will get clothes. drenched. And those diapers. Yeah. Are going to... <laughs> yes, they will That's get drenched. So, you know, it's just little things like that. Like, there's a lot of great little attractions for the kiddos to do um, that, you know, you think, oh, there's not a lot. But there really is a lot. And Epcot is one of those parks that I think that that happens at the most is, is that people just kind of forget about all the educational, that edutainment um, experience that you get at Epcot. And, um, you know, I, I think that that's a really a good, can be a really good park for toddlers. You just kind of got to know where to look. And parenting tip, if you're going to Disney Springs, avoid that end, you know, where the uh, Once Upon a Toy was, like, because they have those huge pop jets there. And any toddler yeah. is going to want to run through those things January to July. They don't care. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, they're going to enjoy it for, like, the first five seconds, and then they're going to be wet for the next three hours that you wanted to spend in Disney Springs. They're going to be whining. So just, like, you got to distract them. If you go to Earl's Sandwich or something, distract them. Don't let them get in. Just, those just things. bring, bring Man. extra, bring oh. extra clothes. Just yeah. make sure you have extra clothes. And you know what? You may want to throw in another pair of extra clothes too, just in case, because it's better to have two pairs of extra clothes or more than not have enough. I'm just well, saying. For the, for the adult, because you got to go in after them to get them. Like, yeah, you, exactly. <laughs> really smart. They're like standing right in the middle because that one at Disney Springs has like a thousand pop jets. Like, they're just gonna stand in the middle. Like, I dare you to come get me. How lucky do you feel? Can you make it in and yeah. out before those things go off? <laughs> How lucky exactly. do you feel, sucker? That's exactly that'd be Mallory. She'd just be grinning at me, like, how lucky do you feel? You can come get me? Come on, man. Dude, dude, All right, Pam, final thoughts for tips for uh, taking toddler. So I think one of the things that you're always going to want to do when you're traveling with toddlers is don't overschedule your time. Um, it just, you know, remember that this is a time that you're going to need extra time to get places. Um, you're going to need extra time to get from one attraction to the next extra meal time. So there's going to be meals you didn't even plan on eating that you're find yourself eating, you know, for one reason or another, it really is not about how much you get done with toddlers really focus on the fact that they're going to find things really magical that you never anticipated. They're going to find magic in some little thing or something, and they're going to want to do it again and again. And that's awesome because they're really discovering that kind of magic. I mean, that's the thing. We get so many questions like what, what age is too young to take your child to Disney? You know, they're like, oh, they won't remember it. No, they won't remember it sometimes because they're too young, mm -hmm. but you'll remember it. And there are so many little things that I did when Hannah was little that she wouldn't remember, right? I mean, think of, she's not going to remember any of this. But mm -hmm. what it does is it helps them develop into a full and complete little person. Um, that's what travel does for you. And I think especially travel to Disney destinations. It helps us all sort of develop into the people that we become. But especially for little kids, there's such value in exposing them to things that they aren't used to and letting them really kind of be immersed in the fantasy that is a Disney vacation. Vacation. So just embrace that as well and take a gamillion pictures. Yes. Get memory, get memory maker when you take the toddlers. You're going to want sure. to sure. all to make that's a good investment. Also, we get, we can't get out of here without mentioning the characters, meeting characters. Jennifer brings up a great point in the chat. She says not all kids will love the characters. Start with face characters if you can, which are the mm -hmm. you know the the characters that are not dressed in the suits, uh, you know, or the you know have the you know the. The big fuzzy uh, characters, and that, that's a great point. And I would say even even furthermore, if they're old enough, you know, say like two or three, have them meet some kind of characters around your town. Maybe before you go down, maybe like a Chuck E. Cheese, or I don't even know what's around anymore. <laughs> where you would go, like I, I don't know, but I mean, just the familiarity. And you're right. I mean, I think a lot of us think that oh well. You know, in the planning video, you have all these you know uh, 18 right. kids that are having a great time with Mickey Mouse. You know, but then your kid. You know, Mickey comes around the corner, you're in town square, and it's like, ah, you know, because I mean, dude, a four and a half foot mouse is chasing your kid. I mean, That's right. you know, it's not natural. I mean, come on. I mean, I know we understand it, but they probably don't. So, that's a great tip. So I would say, you know, do some practice runs. I can't, Ricky, where would you go in town though? Besides like a Chuck E. Cheese to meet like a character, kind of get them, uh, you know, a little green. So any like sports games, I mean, you know, if you've got a, 
for you know a, a major a major team or even if you've got like a minor league team or something like that you know those are going to be a great way to get um an idea of how your child would react to a larger than life character like that um so if you don't have like a Chuck E. cheese i think that's going to be a, a really good option right there um to do something like that I would say, though, if you're in Philadelphia, don't go meet Gritty. That, that no, movie. right? <laughs> no, probably not. I've had that. I've had nightmares myself about that guy. I just I do not want to meet Gritty on a um, you know dark no. dark alley. I think no. that thing is no. just I don't know who designed that. <laughs> it's not, Somebody. It's, it's not ever. good. It is not. No. All right. Anyway, well, we hope that you got something out of today's show. We appreciate it so much. But here's where the fun comes in. We're going to have a thread going on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Podcast. Drop in your tips because these tips are great for traveling with toddlers. But a lot of these things can help with teens and with yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and like people that are 40, you know, 40 years old like ourselves. So, you know what? It's just we want to have better vacations. But when we brainstorm all together, there's a lot of times, hey, I didn't think about that. And it's going to help us to mm -hmm. all have better vacations. So again, drop in the Facebook group at facebook.com slash be our guest podcast. Don't forget today's show brought to you by the great folks over at the magic for less. And Pam, I do want to say you got to show off the trophy again. Uh, just so uh, we're, we're, we're proud. We work we really do work really hard at the magic for less to give every single guest the vacation. They dream about it, the lowest cost possible, but it was fun to see the trophy again this year. And don't give it to Jeanette. No, <laughs> I know you know what I am so there are so many days when I wake up just so proud of our team and just the passion that everyone has for making sure that guests that book with us really experience a wonderful vacation it just is so awesome there we don't get the opportunity to chat about this very much because it just it really isn't the, the place for it but it I mean our team is really passionate about this um it, it takes that passion I think to remain engaged and, and deal with all of the challenges that the the Disney systems put before us. But at the end of the day, everyone really wants that. And that's really what I appreciate. So yeah, we did. We were an elite sales performer again at the um, platinum level, which is awesome um, for us because there's so few agencies in the country that have that got this award and got it at the level that we received it. And I also want to point out that we have been doing this since, are you ready for this? Because you're not going to find this many, very many places out there since 2002. What? Our agency has been open since 2002. Um, we were one of the absolute first agencies to be named an authorized Disney vacation planner or an earmarked agency. Um, so just having been in the program, it's funny. I, I you know, was thinking of that because the earmarked program celebrates 15 years um, this year. And we've been there since the very beginning. So anyways, just so proud of our team um, and so thankful that people trust us with their vacations. We love being your partners in planning. So thank you to everybody. Absolutely. Thank you so much to all the guests. If you've never used a travel agent, you know, it costs you nothing extra. You're going to get great service. You get little booking bonuses. You just really can't beat it. So drop by the magicforless.com. Check out all the great specials. While you're there, fill out that free quote form and just, you know, possible travel dates, see what's out there and you never know what will happen. But uh, do check them out over at the magicforless.com. 2002, Ricky, you were like in second grade. <laughs> <laughs> I was not in second grade. I, I, like you're young. <laughs> I was definitely not in second grade. I was definitely uh, an adult at that point. So thank you very much. So there you go. All right. And uh, again, <laughs> I so wasn't an adult for long, but I was an adult at that point. <laughs> and, uh, again, you know, please, when you shop on Amazon, use our Amazon affiliate link. It's BeOurGuestPodcast.com slash Amazon. We appreciate that so very much. And give us a follow on social media. We're on Instagram and Twitter at BeOurGuestPod and at BeOurGuestMike. And again, on the social media, all the channels, wherever you put it, we'll find it. Hashtag is this romantic this weekend. Talk to your significant other if you're single. Maybe this is why you're single because you need some. Is this romantic advice? I don't know. We're gonna have a great time with this. We don't love. Take Mike's school. advice. Yeah, don't no take sauerkraut. It's, hashtag yeah, no it. sauerkraut. That's it. So uh, yeah, do uh, use the hashtag and we'll find it on the social media. But is this romantic? Not the hashtag no sauerkraut. The hashtag is this romantic. It don't is. do the other one. <laughs> All right, you know what? It's time to get out of here and let you guys have a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back again on Monday with an awesome trip report. So for Pam and Ricky, I'm Mike. Wishing you a great weekend. Until we see you again, we'll see you real soon. All right. Good stuff. All right. good. All right. All right. All right. See you guys. Thanks, All right. guys. We'll see we'll you guys see next you week. Soon. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye.